So what is driving the virus evolution to continue escaping the antibodies that we produce against it so that it can continue infecting us? This is a follow-up video to the last video I made on the topic of the immune escape, which is basically the concept that pathogens can evolve so that the antibodies we produce against them will no longer work. This is what has happened with the Omicron. So why did that happen? Why did that evolution take place? I introduced two concepts to you. One le less popular, and that was the concept that vaccines can also push the evolution of pathogens. And we discussed that in the last video. And today I'm going to talk about the other concept, which is basically the more accepted theory that the immune escape that is pushed, pushing the evolution of the virus in that direction, this happens inside immunocompromised individuals. So hosts whose immune systems are not working uh, properly and therefore they don't have the same defensive mechanisms which then allows the virus to continue evolving in such such hosts and that's the more accepted and more favorite theory at least that's my understanding from the scientific literature that i read so what is happening basically we're talking about person who is immunocompromised is infected and the virus is now encountering very weak immune defense against it and that allows the virus to thrive long enough that as it mutates sorry as it divides it provides it creates random mutations so it does mutate that happens naturally in every single person who's infected that's based on the fact that the that the replication of the virus genome genomic information is not perfect so as it mutates certain mutations will have an advantage to survive against this weak immunological response against it. So these viruses will then be selected for because they can thrive in this weak environment and that will lead to the development of new variants. This is supported by the idea on top of that that typically immunocompromised patients, not typically, I should say, it has been observed that such immunocompromised patients can be sick for a very long time so that has been observed for sure so then of course the longer the infection takes place the more opportunity for the virus to continue creating mutations in such an individual and voila you can create new variants that can then take over in the population but there's a group of authors that wanted to ask a question well, what were to happen if, say, you took an immunocompromised individuals who had absolutely no immune response? <laughs> I hope you see a little fella right there. Meaning, what if their immune system was so compromised that they didn't really produce anything against the virus? Meaning, no antibodies or no T-cell responses or super weak responses. So that means really there is nothing, nothing there. This guy is really not afraid. There's nothing there to really pressure the evolution of the virus. So what would happen in such individuals, right? So they looked at five patients and one of them was not treated with anything and four others were treated with either antibodies or convalescent plasma. What does that mean? This was one of the earliest treatments that was attempted to be developed against SARS-CoV-2 severe symptoms. And that's basically you isolate antibodies from the blood of individuals who survived SARS-CoV-2 infection. And if they survive it and they mounted immunological response then they have antibodies you can take those antibodies from the blood of such people and it can literally use them as injection in an immunocompromised individual so these authors wanted to know hey if we take antibodies either monoclonal meaning it's a single specific antibody purified that it's just one antibody or you take a 
a soup mix of antibodies that's convalescent plasma and you treat immunocompromised individuals what do these antibodies in such individuals uh, do towards the virus evolution so that's what we're going to talk about so then basically <laughs> basically what uh, these authors did <laughs> there's a little critters everywhere here what these authors did basically they looked at what kind of cells these patients were producing so that's they did immunophenotyping so they saw that these individuals had basically either very low or undetectable B cells meaning they didn't really have a mechanism to produce antibodies so that means if any effect of the antibodies on the virus evolution were to be seen authors were going to surmise that it must be the injected antibodies that are that are potentially causing that evolution and they also then tested basically how good the blood was protecting in cells in a in a laborata laboratory test against virus infection that's how you measure those antibody titers you might have heard that term frequently basically this is when we measure titers we're measuring the capacity of antibodies in the blood to neutralize or prevent a virus from infecting cells now this is a this is a basically a lab test so it's contrived contrived mechanism contrived virus specific type of cells and so on i'm going to get into the details of this in one of the upcoming videos where i'm going to be discussing the bivalent vaccines okay so that though that's the other test that they did to see how well did the blood neutralize the antibodies uh, sorry the antibodies in the blood neutralize the virus infection of cells so what they showed that patient one who was never treated they they rapidly had a decline in their blood being able to neutralize anything and they were testing only against the original strain of the virus in this experiment so the one that started the pandemic then patient two and three they were treated with a specific monoclonal antibody oh and by the way all these patients were sick for either 40 to 300 days between them so this kind of reinforces the concept that immunocompromised individuals are at higher risk of being infected for a very long time as you can see even hundreds of days so patients two and three were treated with specific monoclonal antibodies so one single antibody and they were able to neutralize infection for multiple of months and then patient four and five they were treated with that convalescent plasma so the basically antibodies isolated from from some survivor or plural survivors of SARS-CoV-2 infect, infection and what they were able to show that uh, and again uh, those who were treated with convalescent plasma they were able to uh, they, all of these patients were treated early on since their original infection with one exception was treated later on and all of them were able to neutralize the virus for for some period of time and then that that waned and uh, however what they're also able to show that patient two and three those treated with the monoclonal antibodies they also showed evolution of the virus because as they were testing these patients they were isolating the the genetic information of the virus and see and basically monitoring changes in the genetic code of the virus and they were able to show that those that were treated immunocompromised patients treated with those monoclonal antibodies the virus evolved inside these hosts so they basically acquired new mutations and those mutations were predominantly found in the region of the spike protein that is most significantly used in the binding of the ACE2 receptor which is the receptor required for the virus to help help the virus really effectively infect the cells right and that's uh, that's where the spike protein mutates the most uh, throughout uh, the observed variants in and through this pandemic 
So what effectively these, these authors were able to show is they were able to show that patients who had very low T cells and practically no B cells and therefore not expected to have antibodies, not only did such individuals show viral evolution of the virus genetic code, but also corresponding, corresponding effect on uh, their on what that virus was able to do because what they did is then they looked at those mutations see how those mutations what were those new mutations in those patients and they created fake new viruses with spike protein that had these mutations and they tested those for infection of cells and they were able to show that the blood of those immunocompromised patients who produced those new variants it lost the ability to actually even protect against those very new new mutations so you literally can see the evolution of the virus inside these hosts inside these individuals towards a type of variant or type of strain that is literally no longer recognized by their own blood and the antibodies present in that blood so very very interesting on the other hand convalescent plasma patients in this experiment they were still fine they did not detect a virus immune escape such as the one that i just described for the other patients but however i can tell you that this is not a single standalone event and this is why the authors even said hey listen maybe we should reconsider how we're looking at this because depending on the immunocompromised status of an individual treating them with antibodies might not always be the best thing because it could also promote selection of new variants promote that immune escape and as i mentioned there are other papers that also support that so i'll just mention another example which looked at patients treated with convalescent plasma and the authors of that paper also showed that convalescent plasma in such individuals also promoted evolution of the virus inside those, inside those immunocompromised hosts treated with convalescent plasma and basically emergence of variants that promoted the immune escape as well so there was another publication that showed that same behavior and again the authors of that second publication also mentioned listen we might have to consider how we treat immunocompromised patients especially if say their t-cell responses are very weak so they cannot even help the antibodies in it in clearing the the virus so why am i bringing this up because while the theory might be correct that immunocompromised patients might be driving evolution of viruses it might not be because of the fact that they don't have immune system it might be the treatments themselves i.e the type and quantity of the antibodies that are the virus inside those individuals is exposed to whether it's that individual's antibodies or whether we inject those individuals with such antibodies and the final paper i wanted to mention is the one that is probably most significant in the context of what i'm talking about because this paper showed the authors of this paper showed that people they looked at 300 people and they sequenced the virus to see what kind of variants might be present inside these different individuals and they didn't look for main variant which is what is typically reported they looked for entire possible potential variety of what is produced in individuals and all of those individuals showed that they have wide variety of antibodies that they produced so wide variety of virus mutations that they produced and some of them were, were in low quantity there were major strain but besides the major strain there were minor strains and everyone showed some variety meaning that basically whoever gets infected they produce what the authors refer to as heterogeneous complexity of the virus meaning that there's many different types of the virus in any individual post-infection and why do I say any individual 
because not only did the author show that this was observed in every per person they studied, whether that person was immunocompromised or not had no effect, had no effect on what type of variation of the virus was observed, which is, which is crazy because basically this suggests that this can happen in anyone. So that means every single person might be effectively producing various different variants depending, I suppose, on what type of immune response you have inside your body that will pressure the virus to select specific mutations over others. And <laughs> this is the wildest one, the final component I wanted to let you know that I found was so wild was that in that paper where they looked at those 300 individuals with variation of their, of their variants, they showed that when those individuals were infecting others, they didn't just infect with that major variant they had, they infected people with the entire mixture. So that means when you're passing on, when you're sick with COVID-19 and you're passing on your virus to another person, you're passing on that entire complexity of different variants all together. So I thought this was really interesting because what really this suggests is that the immune pressure, so both theories might be okay because in terms of in terms of what causes emergence of variants, because the principles in both all of these theories are similar, meaning it's the immune response in every single individual that ultimately is driving together in unison in a population the emergence of specific variants. So this is basically how we might be producing immune escape, okay? And why the virus is evolving to be able to simply dodge more and more antibodies that we are producing against it. So I thought this is basically the second part of the video I wanted to share with you. Check out our other videos for more information on our events. We have another COVID Q&A coming up. So look, look that up. There's free tickets attached with that. And thank you for everyone who continues to support our channel. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for liking the video. Thanks for all the comments. It's, it's a lot of fun to try to dig through those and find a lot of interesting questions, which of course we are using for the COVID Q&A events. And I look forward to seeing you in another installment of this series. Bye everyone.